Hello and welcome to the Fat Boss Guide to the Blast Furnace Encounter on both normal and heroic difficulty in the Blackrock Foundry. Yes, and this is probably the most unique fight in this entire instance because it pretty much revolves around trying to get the boss out of an oven in order to kill him. Whereas yeah. most bosses are like, let's go for the boss and then deal with the ads and move from shit. It's pretty much you're just trying to get him out the entire fight, which is pretty goddamn cool. Now for this encounter you do want to bring two tanks, in a 10 man bring three healers, in a 30 man bring six healers and bring a mixture of DPS. Now this encounter is in fact a three phase fight and as Alex suggested the first two phases is just all about actually getting access to the boss. So to start off the boss will actually be inside the furnace itself and throughout all phases the boss will start blasting out AoE damage to the entire raid. Now if you actually notice the, the furnace itself actually has a heat meter, well it's actually the boss has a heat meter, the higher this heat is the more frequent the blast will actually occur. So the idea of this encounter is to keep the heat as low as possible by dealing with certain mechanics efficiently if you want this encounter to be as less stressful for your healers as possible. Now towards the end of the fight your heat will inevitably be high, but the later on in the fight that it actually reaches that point the better it is for everyone. So phase 1 is pretty much an ad management phase. But your actual objective in phase 1 is to destroy heat regulators that are located on either side of the blast furnace and you need to destroy them as soon as possible while keeping the furnace's heat to a minimum. Now the heat regulators themselves cannot actually be damaged by players in the traditional way of you know them just casting spells on them, you're actually forced to blow them up with bombs. Now in order to get access to these bombs you need to deal with the furnace engineers. Furnace engineers will spawn throughout this phase and will need to be picked up by the tanks. Now these engineers will place bombs on players giving them a debuff. After 10 seconds this debuff will expire and then your bomb will explode dealing damage to yourself as that player and any players nearby. But of course it will also deal damage to the heat regulators if you're stood near them. So the idea is, is that as soon as you get this bomb debuff placed on you, you run over towards one of the furnaces and you let your debuff expire and that will deal damage to the furnace. However, you can actually also use an extra action button that will just cause your debuff to expire immediately. So yeah, use that if you want to do it nice and quick. Now note, when these engineers die, they will also drop a big bag of bombs. This bag will explode within 10 seconds, just like the normal bombs. However, if you click on the bag, you'll receive the normal bomb debuff giving you even more bombs to actually use on the heat regulators. Now do know in these bomb bags that do drop, there are actually multiple charges. There are multiple bombs in them. So if you click on it, the, the bomb bag won't disappear. There's more to collect. So you do actually want to send a couple of players to click on this and then go and explode by the furnace. Also, the later that you click on the bomb bag, the shorter your debuff will be as well. So if you click it at the very last second, it isn't going to be a 10 second debuff, it's going to be a 1 second debuff. So normally it's not worth doing unless you can do it at the speed of light or something. Generally, if it's on very, very low duration, just don't touch it. One thing that you should consider doing is actually mind controlling the engineers. If you do this, it will grant the priest the ability to actually put bombs on friendly players every 6 seconds or so, which might actually give you more bombs than you normally would but this is totally unnecessary and it's not really a good idea because the downside of actually mind controlling these mobs is that as soon as the mind control is finished they'll become enraged and that will increase the amount of damage they deal by 100% and it will also make them immune to taunt which means tanks need to have threat on them before and after so yeah it's not a good idea to mind control them really it might be something that you might need to do for mythic but for heroic it's not really that essential. Now the engineers don't only just throw bombs all over the place, they also try and repair the heat regulators. Now this is an interruptible cast that they'll just run over, they'll run over towards the heat regulators and start channeling on them. Just make sure that you do interrupt them, you can also stun them and all that kind of stuff. So if you don't happen to have an interrupt, just stun them, just stop them from repairing the heat regulators. And lastly, they'll also do a chain lightning effect called electrocution. If this is up and you're stood next to them, just interrupt them. Simple as that. Now another ad that will spawn in this encounter is the bellows operators. When these guys spawn, they'll walk over towards the furnace, they'll start pulling down on chains and this will actually increase the amount of heat that is inside the furnace. So you want to try and keep this heat low, so you need to make sure you kill these guys off as soon as they spawn. Note if the heat regulators have actually been destroyed and these guys are still up, they'll actually start hitting your tanks. They have a frontal shockwave ability that's really, really nasty and they do quite a lot of damage. So ideally you want to kill these guys before you transition into phase two. Now another ad you'll need to deal with is a security guard. These mobs will drop a shield on the ground periodically that has like a rotating purple circle around it that will make mobs inside pretty much immune to all damage inside the circle. They'll be taking like what one or two damage instead of like 100k. So they're all but immune to all damage. So make sure that you do move everything away and out of those circles because otherwise you won't be able to do any damage to it. 
One note though is that while the bellows operators are operating the bellows, they aren't actually affected by this shield. So if you do want to actually keep all the ads grouped up together underneath the bellows operate and you kind of cleave off of them it doesn't matter if a shield lands on the bellows operators now the last mob that you'll have to deal with in this phase is foreman feldspar and he's sort of the mini boss in this phase now this guy will do a fair amount of damage to your tank but he also has a few set abilities that we need to go over he has a cast called pyroclasm this will just do damage to a random target if you can interrupt it then do so he'll place a debuff on a target called rupture when the debuff expires it will leave a fiery pull underneath that player that will do aoe damage to anyone and just to maximize the amount of room you have in this encounter area when you get this debuff just get the fuck away from everyone else stand right up against the wall let it drop and then come back and also while he's up he'll be doing ticking aoe damage to your entire raid which sort of requires you to hot everyone up so there are all the mechanics and there are everything that you have to deal with in phase one. Let's move on to the tactics and what you actually need to do. So what you want to do is bloodlust on the pool and tank failed to start underneath one of the bellows operators and cleave down that bellows operators and all the other mobs and then kind of drag him over to the other bellows operators. With bloodlust, you should be able to kill both of the bellows operators before new ones spawn, as well as the majority of the ads. Now, once the bellows operators are dead, you want to actually spread your raid into two groups. One group to cover each side of the furnace. So, of course, when the ads do spawn in and the bombs spawn and all that kind of stuff you can drop them off at each side of the heat regulators now you want to have feldspar on the side with your strongest tank and dps so they can continue to damage him as well as eliminate all the other adds in the encounter and because feldspar is just another thing that your tank's going to be tanking you, he's going to get hit pretty fucking hard with all these other adds up so just make sure it is on your strongest tank now the heat regulators are destroyed once 12 bombs have been placed on each side so 12 on the left and 12 on the right now, before you actually decide to transition the boss, it's a good idea to make sure that no bellows operators are about to spawn and your most recent wave of ads is dead. That way you can get a clean transition into phase two because you're about to have even more ads. So don't transition straight away. You can stay in this phase for a little while. Don't take too long because you don't want the heat to go up too high because you just struggle for the rest of the fight. Just make sure that you do transition it with as little ads up as possible. Now, as you do transition into the phase two, then do try and make sure that Foreman Feldspar dies pretty quickly. He should be on fairly low health just from passive AoE and any excess DPS that you can kind of throw on him anyway. But just make sure he dies nice and quick because the AoE damage is just generally not nice. So great, you've managed to do phase one and we get to go into phase two and we'll definitely be able to fight the boss now, guys, right? No. No. No, It's we've still got to deal with some ads and it's even more annoying. Yay. What will happen is that the heart of the mountain, which is the actual boss, will leave the furnace and continue to do the blast damage on the entire raid, but he is completely immune to all damage because of four mobs that have spawned called Primal Elementalists. So it's your objective in this phase to kill the four primal elementalists so you can finally attack the boss. However, not only the boss is immune, these adds are also immune. However, you can counter this because throughout the phase, slag elementals will spawn. Now these guys will just fixate on a random player and just start spamming an ability called burn. This does very low fire damage and is interruptible and it's nothing really like you need to panic about oh, oh shit i'm fixated it doesn't don't worry matter. it doesn't hit you very hard at all now once these slag elementals reach one health they'll explode dealing large damage to all enemies within eight yards however this explosion will also break the immunity on the primal elementalists so what you need to do in this phase is that you need to pick a single primal elementalist that you're going to kill you need to drag over a slag elemental on top of it and then kill the elemental. This will break the shield and then you can start nuking down the elementalist. Now you do not have all the time in the world when the immunity does break from one of the elementalists because a new one will be applied. So you need to make sure that as soon as the shield does break, that all of your DPS and probably your tanks all switch to the elementalist and blow it up as soon as you possibly can. Now, while the primal elementalists are no longer immune, they will apply a healing effect to themselves called reactive earth shield. You need to make sure that you offensively dispel this ability, otherwise it will heal them for a large amount of their maximum health. So yeah, get rid of that. If that goes off, very bad. Now the slag elementals that you just kind of got to one health, don't actually die and this is kind of acts like a pseudo enrage on pretty much the entire fight what they do they just become dormant and each time a new blast comes in from the boss it increases their energy by 25 and then once they got up to 100 energy so after four blasts they'll actually come back to life with full health and then fixate on a player and then just start spamming burn into them and then that's it and then they just it's like a, a reoccurring cycle and pretty much these ads will then stay up the entire fight so really you should never really focus on aoeing down these elementals or anything like that your whole idea is a dps here and i can't reinforce this enough 
Don't AOE, you scumbag bastard. Kill the- uh, just kill one of the slag people, explode it on the elementalist, and then single target that elementalist down. Don't do any AOE. AOEing down these little slaggy bastards doesn't do anything. All it's they a complete do, waste of time. Complete waste of time. It may look good on meters, but I, I hate you personally if you do this <laughs> so yeah just fucking focus on the elementalist and you should be fine now during this phase guards will continue to spawn and really you want one of your tanks to pick these up and try and keep them away from the raid as far as possible because the shields that they throw on the ground although the elementalists aren't affected by it the slag elementals are and if you've put a slag elemental on top of one of the mobs and you're trying to kill it it's not going to fucking die. Yeah. So you need to make sure that you tank them away from the raid and you should be fine. Now, just like the engineers in phase one, you can also mind control these mobs. Again, this isn't really that worth. All it does is allow you to put a debuff on the slag elementals that increases the damage they take by 50% for 20 seconds. But it's not necessary. Yeah, the slag, slag elementals have like no health and they die really quick and you only need to kill four of them in this phase anyway because that's yeah. how many elementalists there is. So use this at your own risk. If you want to use it, then you can. But the guards will get the same enrage effect. It's not a nice thing. We'd recommend that you don't use this. Now, one last ad actually spawns during this fight, and it's a brand new one called the Fire Coolers. Now, they'll cast a heal called Cauterize Wounds that will heal a target for 20% of their maximum health. And if this happens on an Elementalist, that's really bad news because you probably won't be able to kill it within that one slag explosion, like, kind of time frame. So really make sure that you do interrupt this. It is interruptible. To make sure it's, like, number one priority because if this goes off, you're pretty much fucked. Now, they also will cast Lava Burst. This is interruptible, but it's not really that important. Important. However, what is quite important is a debuff that they'll place on players called Volatile Fire. And this is a debuff that lasts for 10 seconds. Once it expires, that player will explode and deal AoE damage to anyone nearby. So following the theme of debuffs in Phase 1, if you've got a debuff, get the fuck away from the raid. And also note why these fire callers are up. They'll also instantly reanimate some of the slag elementals now and then. There's nothing you can really do about this, not a big deal, just let it happen. Now the way that you kind of want to move through this phase, because you have to deal with these fire callers, you can't just ignore them and just hope that you have enough CC and all that kind of stuff to interrupt them. You do need to kill them, but of course you're trying to do the elementalist at the same time. So what we do is that we burst down an elementalist, so that elementalist is now dead. Then we'll kill any fire callers that are active, as well as any like additional guards. If there's like more than two guards, then maybe we'll finish off the lower health one. And then we'll move on to the next elementalist. Then once again, once that's dead, kill the fire people, fire callers, and any excess guards. Then move to the next one, fire callers, excess guards. Next one, fire callers, excess guards. And then once all of those primal elementalists are dead, the boss will actually become active. Now in phase three, the boss will actually become active and you'll be able to now start dealing damage to him. And in this phase, no adds will no longer spawn, which is brilliant. And as you are transitioning into this phase, you want to make sure that you kill off any guards or fire callers that you have left over. But of course, you will still have all the slag elementals up, but there's nothing you can do about these guys. Interrupt them whenever you can, I guess, just to lower damage, but ultimately just nuke the boss. Now, blasts will keep coming from the boss more frequently in this phase, as his heat is now very likely reaching full capacity. And because it is coming in so frequent, you do need to start chaining healing cooldowns for pretty much the entire of this last phase. Now, in this phase, you want the entire raid to stack up behind the boss and just nuke him down. The only mechanics that the raid actually need to worry about is a debuff that is placed on a single target called Melt. This is a debuff that when it expires, it will spawn a circle underneath a player that deals large ticking damage. And then again... As all the debuffs in this fight is pretty much got the debuff, get the fuck out of the raid. Yeah, exactly. This debuff does spawn a pool and it gets absolutely huge. It grows really quick, like 60 times faster than Defile and double the size. So yeah, make sure if you do have this debuff, you have around four or five seconds, just get the fuck out of the group, blink away, drop it off and then come back. If you have any sort of like um, huge damage reductions, you can actually stack pools on top of each other, which is pretty goddamn nice. It just gives you even more room, but one pool in melee or wherever or right on top of the boss means you need to move so much and if a couple of those go off you're just going to flat out run out of space now for your tanks to worry about in this phase is two debuffs so what the boss will do is that he'll apply a debuff called heat and all this is is just a stacking fire dot that deals damage every second for 30 seconds now every time heat is actually applied to you at the same time, you'll get a debuff called Tempered. Now, this debuff is actually permanent and will stack at the exact same rate that Heat does. Now, the higher your Tempered stacks are, the more damage you'll actually take from the Heat dot. However, this will only be super potent and more effective if Heat stacks are the same number as Tempered stacks. So what you need to do in order to make so your Heat stacks are always lower than your Tempered stacks 
is once the first tank has three stacks, you want your other tank to taunt and get himself three stacks. And from this point on, you just keep taunting on three. And then that way, your tempered stacks will be going up and up and up. So the dot will be doing more and more damage. But if heat only stays at three, you need a really large amount of tempered stacks for it to actually matter because the gap between them is quite large. So it's not very potent. So just to summarize this whole phase, tanks taunt on three. If you get a debuff, fuck off and then come back and nuke the boss and be happy with it. If you can use Bloodlust again at this point, even though you used it at the beginning, if you can use it again, that is great. And if you are constantly struggling to get through this phase for whatever reason, you might even want to save Bloodlust for it if it isn't up at this point. It really depends on your DPS and your coordination, how quickly you can get into this phase. It could be at eight minutes or it could be at like 11 minutes. So it really yeah. does depend. Over the course of our first week of doing this, in our different runs that we did, we had very varied results. So your times, depending on your composition, can be completely different. But yeah, just see where you want to use Blood Dust and you should be fine either way. So thank you very much for watching, guys. If this guy did help you out, then make sure you leave us a like. It'll help us out a lot. And if you want to see any of our other Blackrock Foundry guides, then make sure you do click up on the annotations you see on your screen now. And that'll take you straight to those videos. Thanks for watching. Thank you.